Well, good evening. Oops, well, good evening to you. Uh, this is Pastor Dave Benke of St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran Church in the borough of Brooklyn and the city of New York. We're coming to you tonight from the home viewing screen, and I hope you all picked up the first part of that. If not, I'll repeat, but uh, I'm here in Oakland Gardens, Queens. Queens, of course, uh, is the home of the New York Mets, just so we get that straight. We're going to do a worship service tonight from the house in preparation for this Sunday, which is Transfiguration, the last Sunday of the season of Epiphany, and also getting ready for next week, which is Ash Wednesday. I'll have some announcements about that. Everything kind of got uh, pushed around a little bit just because of the realities of the schedule. But we're going to begin the way we do every time we meet, and that is to begin by pledging allegiance to the flag the United States of America, and then thanking God. One, two, three. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Beautiful. And now we're thinking of all our health care workers that are scattered all over the place now doing that uh, Vaccine thing, we're up to about a million and a half New Yorkers with the vaccine, two of us right here included, and uh, many people I know, but we have a long way to go. And uh, so we're thanking God for the healthcare workers who are out there and dispersed, those who are in the hospitals, taking care of those who are in need of that kind of care, intensive care, thanking God for those in nursing homes, those who are... Uh, caring for others in their own homes, teachers, teachers, uh, those who learn, students who are learning on site, for essential workers, and we have many of them uh, out and about just trying to give us food and what we need to get by in life, and then for those who serve and protect in our city and all over the country. One, two, three, let's give them thanks. God, thanks. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So tonight we're going to start with a song. Oh, wait. Why don't I start by giving the invocation? How about that? Let's start, as we do in all the churches, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, tonight we ask you to help us to be lifelong learners. We, help, we ask you to give us that ability to follow you as disciples as those who seek to learn from life, uh, not just from books except for the book, but also from life, and allow us the privilege of engaging uh, in that task with you every day as we seek to walk that straight path with you. Bless our worship, our conversations about your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So we'll have some many time, good time for prayer, but we're going to start by singing. Oh, boy. Now, here's where Stephen and I have a lot of laughs about this. But when I name these songs that are in these various machines, I just it just comes into my head. I put a name on it. I don't know if it even is right. This one is called Learning to Lean. You know Learning to Lean? All of you out there in television land, you will learn it tonight. You will learn to lean. Uh, I'm going to sing the Yvonne, uh, the Yvonne portion. Uh, Yvonne usually sang a verse here, but I'm going to sing it tonight. Well, I'll be singing the whole thing. And you can sing along, choir members. On your marks, get set, go. Learning to lean. Oh, wait a minute. I don't think I'm... Hold on. That was very close. Oh. One more time, learning. 
to lean, learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus, finding more power than I've ever seen. I'm learning to lean on Jesus, a sad, broken-hearted, at an altar I knelt. I found peace that was so serene, and all that he asks is. A childlike trust and a heart that is learning to lean, a learning to lean, learning to lean, a learning to lean on Jesus, a finding. More power than I've ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Second time, learning to lean on Jesus. Slow it up. Learning to lean on Jesus. Okay then, learning to lean, that's what it's all about. So we're going to read a passage or two, but I'm going to get into what this is tonight, because I have divided these passages into this. So I better just explain the whole routine tonight. Because of Ash Wednesday, and we can't blame Ash Wednesday, it was coming anyway, I just didn't see it coming. Because of Ash Wednesday got in here, I could not really get some uh, power behind that whole thing we're going to do on character building. It would have gotten interrupted. So I'm going to do an introductory session tonight, which is for all those of you who have ever been leaders or wanted to be or think of yourselves as a follower. Are you a follower or a leader? Neither. You can't be. You have to be one or the other. Follower or leader, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about the, the dynamics of being a lifelong learner tonight. And so when I do that, I had to pull together a whole bunch of other Bible passages, because I had told you to bring your Bibles anyway. And if you're at home, what excuse do you have for not bringing your Bible? You left it in church? No. It's got to be there. So pull out your Bible. I put, I put these in the uh, already in the uh, bulletin, however. First one is, and I'll just... I'll just read this. The first part is follow the leader. And this is about being a disciple. So I'm going to read it, and then later I'll talk about it. Philippians chapter 2. Just listen to what it means to follow the leader. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united in Christ with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, Paul says, then make my joy complete by being like-minded and having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or, ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. That's what it means to follow. You have the same mindset. And then I'll read the second one, and then we'll sing. Uh, Philippians 3. Think about these. They're all coming from the same book, by the way. What do we know about Philippians? It was written to people who were Philippian. Yes, and where did they live? They lived in a little Asian town, a South, or, uh, Asia Minor town called Philippi. 
And Philippi was like San Diego. It was where all the retired soldiers and sailors went to live. It was a retired army Roman place for the Romans who had uh, fought their last battle and they went there to live. So he, he really reached out to that community and he found that because some of them had been somebody, right? It was uh, Brigadier General X and Colonel Y met Private Z and maybe uh, maybe that Brigadier General was trying to kind of run it by uh, the other two. So here's what he says. And he just said that. He said, don't, don't think you're better than the next guy. You all got to show yourselves that you're the same. You're all one. Now he says, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what's behind, straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of, them who are, all of us, then, who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only live, let us live up to what we've already attained. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. I'm going to talk about that later because that has to do with following the leaders who follow the leader. <laughs> Second song, and this has to do maybe with you if you're a parent or if you're a child. What a friend we have in Jesus. This is a different version. So if you're the West Indian, this is the West Indian version. And so it, it, there's a few phrases that are just a little bit different. Uh, you'll hear it. Uh, this is not neither country nor western. This is Jamaican. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer oh what peace we often forfeit oh what needless pain we bear Because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. so faithful who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness take it to the Lord in prayer are we weak and heavy laden cumbered with a load of care your Savior still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield find the solace there. Thank you for that finish. Okay. How are y'all doing? 
I hope you're fine. I hope you're uh, ready to uh, hear the word of the Lord tonight. And as we get ready for a whole other season in the church year, there's not a shortage of things going on outside either. Uh, there's all kind of political intrigue. There certainly is that vaccine coming to our town, coming to our country, and all of the decisions about opening school and changing the way we kind of do things. And I was thinking about it tonight in terms of those kids, the children we have in school, at our own school, and then all of our, all of our kids from church and how they're doing. It seems to me so hard to learn this way. I mean, you're, you're stuck in front of a screen all day. Uh, half the fun of going to school was fooling around during class, for Pete's sake. Come on. So, so we have a whole other way of educating. Not that we couldn't use a computer, not that we couldn't do all of those things, but that that's the main way of learn of what we call now learning. And the Bible comes to us in this form and the package that we have from way back there. And it says there's a whole other way that human beings learn. And it's at the level not only of the head, but of the heart. And so so tonight, I'd like to really speak about what it means to tackle topics from the Bible, what it means to engage yourself with church leaders or with your parents or with uh, your kids, uh, your relatives, or with the, with the Word of God itself and listen to what it has to say to you. How do we do that? And the way it works is that, and it's the same thing, Jesus, if you're going to do this, you have to be a follower. Jesus said, what? Follow me, right? First words out of his mouth to pick disciples. And what was a disciple to be? If, are you disciples? If you're going to be discipled, it's a lifelong process. Uh, when I went to, when I was a kid, the idea was this. You learned from the ages of 6 to 14 about religion. And all those years you were learning something in Sunday school or in grade school. Then you went to confirmation class and then you graduated. Never to have to learn anymore. We know what we need to know. I've got my confirmation certificate. Uh, and, and guess what? A lot of kids followed that absolutely that way of doing it. And we never saw them again because they graduated. They graduated from church. They graduated from all of those things because they knew the facts necessary to graduate. And that is, of course, absolutely not what it's about. But it was, it, it, there was a thought process. You learn like that when your mind is open. I think we always got confirmed. I think we got confirmed too young. We were not ready to talk about the serious issues of life that happen even in later teenage years. And I used to talk to the kids I had as students here at St. Peter's about that. I said, are you really ready to make these commitments? Well, I'm going to say to you tonight that the commitment you have made, and if you're just exploring, you don't even have to have finalized it, but if you're making that commitment, it is to follow in a lifelong pattern. Not only of what you know up here, not only if you know every piece of Bible trivia that we have to offer you here. So, uh, what were the Philippians? Question, answer, retired soldiers. Thank you. Uh, that's, that, that's not really it. What's, what it's really about is at the deeper level, how does the Word of God engage you? How do the people around you whom you follow as leaders in your church or in your family, how do they influence you? How do they help you to develop the pattern of life? That is really what discipleship is. Did the, did the actual 12 disciples have trouble with that? Big time! Because they could not put it in. They wanted, they loved to be with Jesus. They never, they only deserted him when he was in trouble, right? <laughs> Unfortunately. But they, they loved being around Jesus and learning, but it wasn't sinking in. And remember, he spent every day of three years with them. You know, and St. Paul, we're told, spent 14 years studying before he went out to be an apostle. So think about it. It's a lifelong pattern, and it's, it's a real deep, it's a deep dive. 
So when we talk about this, it's follow the leader. A disciple has to do with, what's the other word that comes from disciple? Discipline, right? If you're going to be a disciple, you have to show some discipline. And that would mean you are studying the way that Jesus took so that when it comes to your mind and your soul and your heart, they are following Jesus as well as just the knowledge part of knowing the facts of the case. And that's what St. Paul says here right off the top tonight. Have the same mindset of Jesus. What's the next verse in that passage? Philippians 2 verse uh, 6, right? If I were to ask you to look up 6 through 10, you would find who being equal to God did not, did not think it robbery to be equal to God, but humbled himself and took up the cross even unto death. In other words, the mindset of Jesus was to serve me, to serve you. And if that, and, and that's what he says earlier, he said, Don't, you're always thinking about yourself, How about sticking in other people there. Remember I, I gave you that little, um, that little thing, J-O-Y, Jesus, others, you. If you start with Jesus, then the next step is others. So you can almost monitor whether this discipleship thing is working for you on how your self-interest either captures you and you become a taker or how your self-interest fades out and you become a giver. It wasn't that Jesus didn't take care of himself. And, and by the way, the Bible says, love your neighbor instead of yourself. No, love your neighbor as yourself. Self-care is great, but remember you're here to also care for others. So that's thing one. In getting ready to be a lifelong learner is to think about your mindset and how it is in Jesus. The second passage I read from uh, Philippians was about Paul saying something else. He said, join together in following my example. Now, why does the guy, is he arrogant or what? You know, don't do, in other words, what is he saying? He's saying what, what, what I think I hope parents do and, and other leaders. Follow me. Don't just do what I say, do what I do. If I'm living this way, why wouldn't you want to follow me? And, and, and that's what, what he's saying there is uh, very specific. He said, I take a view of things that is forgetting everything that's back. And see how many people don't get stuck here. Lifelong learning means being able to shuck off what's back there, all the resentment, all the other junk from the patent. Oh, this, I would love to be able to shuck this off, this solitude, this in this mask, all of that. But while we're in it, what are we learning? Are you learning anything about yourself while you're in this fix, while you're inside these rooms that we must inhabit? And God is opening to you a door to learn more about him. And, and, and the third thing he says then is this one, Philippians 4. I'm going to read these and just go right through them. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've received, learned, or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I don't know if I'm that uh, set that way to say, just do everything I'm doing, you'll be fine. Because I do not always follow this. Whatever is pure, lovely, admirable, noble, right. I mean, my mind goes down other tracks all the time. And I think, again, there's a fence here. And, and, and I, I want to speak about boundaries now for lifelong learners. The fence is this. The boundary fence is that the peace of Christ will, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God is what is the boundary. And when you find yourself not at peace, it may be that you've wandered outside the boundary. And you're not thinking about what's good and noble and right. You're thinking about... The, oh, whatever else you got to deal with, uh, which today could be any number of millions of things, okay? But Paul states it very carefully. 
He says, follow me then. That's what I do. That's how I get through the night. Does a pastor stay up all night sometimes in, in uh, anxiety? Sure. And when I do that, I try to lean back on my prayer and I uh, try to lean back on the Holy Spirit and try to lean back on, on the life I do have in Christ. See, and it, and it changes, it changes my perspective. It allows me to go back to sleep. The God of peace will be with you. So a lifelong learner is going to be a disciple who follows, a learner who learns, and one who is able to follow others. I think I'm, I'm thinking about kids now, not just little ones, but uh, teenagers. Is this easy? Uh, to follow your parents? Is it easy to listen? Is it easy not to get caught up in the moment? Not at all. And so think about that boundary stone. If there is peace here and you have that peace and you start to get way outside that peace, reframe, refocus, redo, and Jesus will give you that peace back. Now we're going to go to learning. So learning is, is uh, something, so there's discipling and learning. Learning, it says here, Jesus didn't use this word several times. And you'll listen to the two times I've, I've outlined here. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at a tax collector's table, Matthew 9. At the tax collector's booth. Oh, no. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, Many tax collectors and sinners came up and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous. But sinners. Is that a powerful lesson on what learning is? Learning would be to see the world a different way. So the people you have been trained to despise, the hated tax collector who took the money and gave it to the Romans, Matthew. I ordained a guy who's an IRS agent a few years ago up in upstate New York, <laughs> and I used that passage. <laughs> and I said, does anybody love you on the job, man? He said, no. <laughs> he said, they're fellow employees. We take care of one another. But other than that, nobody, no. So they, they're used to getting it. They're used to taking it. And what happens here is that Jesus said, you, you're just taking somebody by occupation. I care about his heart. I asked the man to follow me. He gave up the whole thing, and he's with me now. And, and, and guess what? As soon as that guy, who they would have thought of as the worst kind of character came with Jesus. What does it say? Many other tax collectors came to hang out with Jesus. And we might think of that today as lifelong learning in terms of following. That Matthew had been a disciple for four hours, right? <laughs> and, he, and, and he followed Jesus and everybody followed him right into the, uh, right into the banquet hall with Jesus and sinners. And Jesus said, learn what this means. And we should learn that as disciples. He comes to call us, not because we're righteous, but because we are sinners. And he comes directly for us. The next one, that's what learning is. So learn this, Matthew 11, another time Jesus uses the word learn. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Isn't that powerful to say, if you're going to learn, let me learn of Jesus, you will lay your burden down. If you're going to be learning and following and discipling with Jesus, the first thing he says is, come unto me and lay your burden down. He takes a tax collector and takes him right out of that life. He takes a guy who was his mortal enemy, uh, Saul, who became Paul, and turns it around like that and does the same for us. So 
learning, lifelong learning, is o it's okay to make changes. In fact, it's mandatory that God make that change by his grace in your heart. And then finally, uh, these last three things here are, we learn by listening. And uh, I hope when you're reading the word of God, you're listening to it. It's, it's going in. Uh, and listening to other people. If somebody comes to me with a, a critique, what do I want to do? First thing I want to do, shut up. I don't want to hear that. Sometimes just you shut up and let somebody tell you what they really think. It might help. Uh, secondly, learn by interacting. Jesus ran this kind of a ship. People were always asking him questions. People always came up to him with a further comment. He would teach and they would interact. Uh, people, people weren't just sitting in a lecture hall taking notes and falling asleep. It was on the go, on the move. So there's interaction on the go in your life. And then this last word here, which is, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. That's only used in the Bible seven times, and it's all in the New Testament. What does it mean to have hearing ears? What does that mean? I'm, I, since I, I, I'm now so closely connected at the School for the Deaf, I think it's it's poignant in in that sense. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Is he talking about these ears? I think he's talking about that other level of hearing, where something goes into you directly. And I've been at events where, if I said it, you know, in another setting, nobody was hearing me at all. And if I said it in that place, maybe the funeral, maybe the wedding, maybe the the counseling session, all of a sudden the ears were open. And the same for me. Uh, the times when I've been available to listen were te what they call teachable moments. A teachable moment. Maybe you're in one of those now. This is a teachable moment. COVID-19, I got sick. It's COVID-19, I got stuck. COVID-19, I had to reframe my entire existence. A teachable moment. Listen with ears open to the Word of God, because it's always going to come out the same way. I'm there for you. I'm there for those who are meek and lowly. If you labor and are heavy laden, you know, if you need a break, you need a rest. And so educate means something. Educate, to be educated, an educator is somebody who leads knowledge and wisdom out of a person. It's not somebody who indoctrinates an indoctrinator is just pouring what he, th what he or she thinks into you. Education is you are learning how, to, how, to, how that comes out of you. And it's a beautiful process. That's the way Jesus did it all those three years. So that by the end of it, through all of the storm and stress, and we're going into Lent now, when those folks came out on Pentecost Sunday, they rocked the world. They rocked the world. And he said, I'm leaving you here. And I'm going to think in the first month or two that Jesus was with them, they said, I'm going to go and I'm going to, if he just said, I'm going to go and leave you here, they would have said, well, we're going home. Back to the fishing nets, dude. I'm done. What are you talking about? At the end of that time, they were prepared by God to be disciples for the rest of their lives. And that's where I want to leave it tonight in getting us ready to really work on building character uh, as a church. Okay, followers learn by doing. Well, I already went there. Uh, followers are, we're always learning. Well, okay, then I didn't finish. My fault, my bad. What's the, the, what did Jesus do? After he had trained them, got them together, what did he do? He'd say, stick with me, never get more than eight feet away from me, and you'll be fine. Otherwise, you're going to go straight down. He didn't. He sent them out. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, he sent them out as the 12. In Luke chapter 10, it says he sent them 70 of them out, 70 of those people out. And what did he tell them to do? I want you to go and just sit around for a while. No, he said, you now go and heal people. You now go and cast demons out. You now go and teach. You now go and preach. You you tell them about the kingdom of God. And and if you if you'd have been there, are you ready for that? Ready, set, go. <laughs> Learn by doing, you know. <laughs> so 
I, we'll get back. That, that's what this character, these uh, character builder Bible studies are. You're going to be learning by doing what God intends for us to do. So be blessed in that in this week before uh, Lent starts, in the week of transfiguration when Jesus walks up that mountain. And uh, I know that we'll be back together this Sunday, even though they're forecasting snow again. I believe I'm going to make it to church this Sunday. And we'll invite you, but not if it's like, stay home. We'll be there. Uh, but you can come. It's not bad. And then next Wednesday, well, I'll explain that later. We're going to go into prayer time now. Are we ready? And here we are. But by, by the way, the other thing I have to say here is that we found out this truth to be equal. However many of there are of you watching right now, there is times 10 of that who watches this later. So we have to be very careful, and I'm going to say it here. If you have prayer requests and you watch this next third, next Friday or Saturday, put the prayer request down. Send it in. We'll use it on Sunday. You know, that's all we can say is we, we, we keep praying through this all the time. And it's really my fault for not, not noticing that as much as I should, that many of you do not see this live. You see it later. Uh, okay, so let's go into our prayers for Deja and Andrew Ryan. Uh, that's Deja is uh, Brenda's granddaughter, and Andrew is uh, June's son, and they're celebrating birthdays this week, in the week of Valentine's. And then we have those who are in need of, uh, who are sick, Sevi with an MRI, uh, back pain and a spine specialist she's going to see, for Rob from Brenda, who is uh, back in the hospital. With COVID. With COVID. Very bad. Okay. For Rob, in the hospital with COVID and compromised. All right. Special prayers there. For Carol and Gillette for healing. And they're down in the same, down in Florida. Our Florida uh, St. Peter's group. For Selma Kaufman for healing. For Audrey Sharp. So Audrey Sharp is now in a rehab center in Brooklyn. I spoke to her in Brooklyn, in uh, Woo, Crown Heights. Uh, I spoke to her on the phone today. Somebody gave her their cell phone for two minutes. She doesn't have a phone. They don't allow phones now because of COVID. She only uses it. She doesn't have a cell. So she'll be in there and no visitors, of course, uh, etc. So we'll hear from her periodically. But she seemed in good spirits and is, is rehabbing her legs so she can walk up and down again and go back to her apartment. Diane Miller for continued healing. Margarita Ramos' mom, who had her first chemo today. today, And I guess it went well. For Joanna Keith Furman and the whole Carrington and Furman families for healing. It's been a long winter. Brad Campbell has a fifth week, sixth week chemo and radiation. Janine, I spoke to Janine on Monday, and uh, it's not easy. She's got the, the virus, and it's there, and it's taking its time getting out. So keep her in your prayer, but she's strong, and she believes she'll be back back in the world in a, in a little while. For Sunita Chattergoon and her family, for Sunita with her knee, and uh, the whole family for healing and strength. For Velma and Eddie, for guidance. Ryan and Isley families, for guidance. For Susan and Karen. So Susan and Karen are so concerned about their good buddy, Audrey. And I pray for you as well, Susan and Karen, that you get the strength you need to see you through. For Ann Dimonoff and family, that's our North Carolina connection. And uh, may you be blessed. I know she had a birthday last week, so let's keep uh, keep the prayers going. Anybody else? Marsha and families. March on family, directly next door to church. That's it? Okay, here we go. We're going to pray the Lord's Prayer at the... Uh, wait a minute, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm trying to get a little bit... Okay, we're going to sing this song before praying. And this song you, you probably won't know. But I know it, so I'll sing it. It's called... It's about call, your calling and following Jesus. How clear is our vocation, Lord? You know what vocation means, calling. How clear is our vocation, Lord, when once we heed your call to live according to your word and daily learn, refreshed, restored, that you are Lord of all and will not let us fall. 
And then look at some of these verses. They're really cool. So I'll sing. You can sing along because you may know this. It's a great song, really. Here it goes. It's under vocation two. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Denoyed West Indian that day. How clear is our vocation, Lord, when once we heed your call to live according to your word and daily learn, refreshed, restored, that you are Lord of all and will not let us fall. But if forgetful we should find your yoke is hard to bear. If worldly pressures fray the mind and love itself Cannot unwind its tangled skein of care, our inward life repair. We marvel how your saints become in hindrances more sure. Whose joyful virtues put to shame The casual way we wear your name And by our faults obscure Your power to cleanse and cure In what you give us, Lord, to do together Just new, may we not cease to look to you, the cross you hung upon, all you endeavor done, all never done, all you. somebody suggested that. Oh, that was me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace tonight, and we are so thankful that we have been called to be your disciples. We thank you for the call we have received in our baptism, the call we're receiving now, maybe just by looking in, the call we receive every day to be about peace and justice, the call we receive to follow the true path, the call we receive to come before you humbly and confessing our faults and sins, but knowing that you are good to forgive us and start us fresh. Thank you for the refreshment we receive through your word. Lord, in your mercy, we pray now for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. and We have so many in our midst who are thinking about those wonderful people who are no longer with them. And we ask, Father, tonight that as they miss them so much, that you might find a way to heal them when they come unto you and they are heavy laden with that load of care. Please bind them up and heal them and allow them to see that in the mystery of your eternal love, they will be brought back together again. Lord, in your mercy, we pray now for those sick and suffering in any way. We've named the list before you tonight. There are many more in our hearts and minds, whether it is physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional, whether we need guidance and strength, or whether we just need some real physical healing uh, for those who are suffering in hospitals and in difficult places. Father, heal them by the power of Jesus and his righteousness. As that healing is brought into their lives, Lord, may they give you the grace and give you the glory always for what you have done. And heal us internally, Father. Where we are just tired of sitting in this COVID world, allow us the freedom to still be your children and to still walk by faith and to still wait upon the Lord and renew our strength. So, Father, we ask tonight for all those whom we have prayed for. Lord, in your mercy, 
We pray now for those celebrating life, for the gift of life, for a big weekend coming up, the Valentine's weekend, and we ask that uh, you would continue to surround us with your love so that we might share it with those whom we love. And allow that circle to be growing larger and larger, Heavenly Father, that we might invite many, even as the disciples did as old, of old, inside that banquet room to receive that heavenly banquet with you. Bless us, Lord, in all that we do and say and think in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of Almighty God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A couple quick announcements. Uh, first of all, you should definitely see the interview we did on Facebook with uh, Rachel. Uh, Rachel Chanderdot. Uh, beautiful uh, story of her journey in life and how it leads her uh, into studying and, and pro producing uh, many important things for the Center on Anti-Racist Research. And that's a really, it's a good, I really had fun listening to uh, Rachel there. We're going to do more of those. I can do them cross-country, by the way. Ha! Huh. It's just a Zoomer, so we can Zoom with people wherever they might be. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think that format helps because people can hear a dialogue between two people. Second thing is, we have got to get busy on our platform. We have this platform, Facebook, which I'm on right now. We have our website, and then which needs always needs to be tightened up and expanded. But then we have YouTube as a platform, but we can't produce live work on there unless you all sign up on YouTube for an account. You have to, you have to be YouTubers, whatever that means. You don't have to pay anything for this. But then, then if we have a ton of people on that, we can become our own television station. That's the way it works. You become like your own channel. So we have to get it up to a, th a thousand. We're getting a thousand people, by the way, who see this. So all of you that see this, we're going to put out a little note on that. What bothers me is that a lot of those who don't have Facebook, and a lot of people choose not to, they can only see it on YouTube, and then they can never see it live. And that's where you get the interaction. So I'm, I'm really focusing that, and we're going to upgrade our, our uh, equipment as well. We want to use this time of transition at St. Peter's to do everything we can this way so that when we do get outside and we can get into your house and bless it and we can get into people's homes and pray with them again, that we are really ready to go. Okay? Now, a quick, a quick uh, uh, vaccine announcement. I brought my man with me tonight. There he is. This is the... One of the weirder Mr. Mets. This is Mr. Met with the green suit there. This is Easter. It's Easter. Easter Met. This is Mr. Met at Easter time. This is a foretaste of the feast to come. Oh, I'm over here. Okay. There he is. He's good. He's really good. See that smile? What a nice guy. It almost looks a little, it almost looks a little creepy there. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I only wanted to say this. They're giving the vaccine at City Field now. So if you're not signed up, find one of those places. Check your health, check all those signs. But really, uh, we're saying, I think it's good, especially older folks like us. I need to get that shot. And we did. So we got the first one. We're waiting for the second one. And Sunday, we're going to have Lent. We're going to have Lent in church. We're going to have a, a Lenten folders. We will give them out with gloves or something. And we're, okay, now this is the hard one. So you're going to hear it here for the first time. And then we're going. How do we impose the, how do we give you the ashes on Ash Wednesday? See, I should not be touching you with those ashes. And if I have a glove, it's going to not work. It doesn't work with gloves. 
So we're going to use those extra strength Q-tips. We're going to get Q-tips, and I, I'll be each one will have will eat one per customer. I'll have the Q-tip into the ashes, do the ashes like that, and I think that'll work, and I think it'll 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 be fine. Uh, we'll we'll test it. We're going to test it beforehand. But that way you can be sure there was no touch, there was none of that stuff was happening, and we can be safe. Um, one way or the other, it is Ash Wednesday, and people want to have ashes on Ash Wednesday. I might do it outside the church during the day if the weather is halfway decent, too. Uh, we're not going to do it in the church for just passers-by. Next week there's no school because of the uh, winter recess, so it's a different week. So, so okay, that's Ash Wednesday. Sunday we will uh, go up the mountain with Jesus, and then we're going to come back down and get ready to go all the way to the cross. Final song tonight, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. I want to thank all of you who are watching, all of you who stay with us through this all, and uh, spread the good news. Spread the good news as a lifelong learner. Here we go, Precious Lord. Before we go, City Field will have more. And today, if you go to City Field, you get to meet Mr. Met and Mrs. Met and Uncle Met. Uh, so and they're finished. Though. They're out. They're out with their doses already for the week, which is crazy. So they need more stuff. Okay, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God bless you through the week. We'll see you on Sunday.